Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange tales of The Whistler? I'm the Whistler. John was here in this room. I saw him and talked to him. He had a message for me. And while he was here, the room was filled with the odor of musty roses. Another Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the unusual story of apparition. In the midst of a circle of tall, moaning pines spreads an old mansion. On the second floor, a low light burns in a large bedroom. The bedroom of Elizabeth Kemper, the elderly mistress of the mansion. Mrs. Kemper's husband, John, died suddenly a year ago and left his entire estate to his wife, Elizabeth. Shortly after John's death, Elizabeth brought her husband's sister, Bertha, and Bertha's daughter, Celia, to live with her. Since John's death, Elizabeth's health has gradually failed and she has taken to her bed. In the meantime, Elizabeth's only sister, Mary, has come to live in the great house and Mary's son, Herbert. Now, long past midnight, Elizabeth tosses in her bed and mumbles. John. John. What is it? What do you want? Why don't you say it? Suddenly, Elizabeth's door bursts open, and Bertha moves into the room and stands beside the bed. Elizabeth? Elizabeth? Huh? Huh? Ah! Elizabeth! Bertha. Oh, Bertha. Oh, yes, Bertha. Why did you scream? Scream? Did I scream? Yes. Just as I came in the room. Uh, you must have frightened me. Were you dreaming? No, I... I don't think so. But I don't know. I... I thought John was here. John? You thought John was here? Yes. Standing there beside the bed. Elizabeth. I saw him, too, just a moment ago. What? In my room. Oh, but that's nonsense. Why should he always appear to you? I'm his sister. Yes. Yes, of course. John was trying to tell me something. Something about you. What? He was trying to tell me that you should listen to him. Listen to him? Something about the property. What about the property? He says he made a mistake. Mistake? He says he wasn't killed accidentally. He did it deliberately. He committed suicide. Suicide? Why should he have done that? He hasn't explained that. But he says now he knows the truth about everything. He knows that his reason for hating me and cutting me off in his will was unfounded. And he's sorry. He's been trying to reach you, but you aren't receptive. You claim you've seen John every night since the day he died. I have, Elizabeth. I swear I have. I've seen him many times in my dreams. But why doesn't he tell me what he wants? Some night, Elizabeth, John will reach you in your waking moments. Then you'll believe me. But I can't understand it. He didn't like you and he told me so. Why should he change now? Perhaps it would be best to see the and I left you. Why should you want to leave all of a sudden? You have your own sister and her son, Herbert. You won't be alone. I only knew what John was trying to say to me. I've told you what he's been saying to me. Mother, is anything wrong? We heard someone scream. 
At least I thought I did. No, nothing's wrong. Go back to bed. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! What is it? What's what, Mary? Oh, dear me, I, I heard someone scream. What was it? Are you all right, Elizabeth? Yes, Mary, I had a nightmare, that's all. Oh. Well, I, I was worried. You better go back to bed, all of you. I'll be all right. Yes. Yes, come along, Evelyn. I'll darling. see you in the morning. Good night. But, Mother, why do you keep frightening Aunt Elizabeth by telling her about Uncle John? I'm not frightening her. She should know the truth. But she is frightened. Why, she's getting worse and worse. Are you sure you have seen Uncle really? Do you dare suggest that I'm lying? Is that what you mean, Celia? No, no, Mother. I didn't mean that honest. Better. And don't you ever say such a thing again. But why doesn't he appear to Aunt Elizabeth? She only dreams about him. That's something that can't be answered. There are those who are gifted with the powers to see those who have departed. See them and talk with them. I'm one of those so gifted. Do you understand? Yes, yes, Mother. John is trying to get a message to Elizabeth about me. And because he finds it difficult to reach her, he's chosen me as medium. What is the message? He left me nothing in his will because he hated me and thought I hated him. But you did. I did not. It was his imagination. But now he's learned the truth. Now he knows I had nothing but his best interest at heart. He's trying to tell Elizabeth to leave all the estate to me. And he will continue to return to this house until his mission is accomplished. Then his soul can rest in peace. I'm frightened, Mother. I don't want to stay here another day. I can't stand it You'll here. You'll stay here until I'm ready to leave. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, Mother, I, I hear. Now stop this nonsense and go to bed. Yes, Mother, I, I'm sorry. You'd better be. In another part of the great house, Herbert is talking with his mother, Mary, Elizabeth's own sister. Now, now, Mother, get hold of yourself. I'm terribly frightened, Herbert. Why should you be frightened? Nothing can harm you. What have you to be afraid of? Oh, there's something awful in this house. I can feel it. I don't want to stay here any longer. We must leave before it's too late. I'll admit that strange things are going on, but I'm not ready to leave here. Not just yet. We don't belong here, now, Herbert. Elizabeth is your own sister. I don't think John wants us You here. really believe that John's spirit is walking around this place every night? Well, what else? Then why doesn't he say what he's trying to say and get it over? Oh, I can't stay here much longer. I'll, I'll lose my mind. I can imagine John's not wanting Bertha here, since he stipulated in his will that Aunt Elizabeth must never give Bertha a dollar of the estate. But what's he got against you? Nothing. Oh. You didn't say that Elizabeth couldn't leave you a part of it. All I want to do is get out of this house. Well, I don't feel that way about it. Why should you walk out and leave everything to Bertha? Well, that's why John's staying around here. He doesn't want anyone here. Well, ghost or no ghost, I'm not walking out at the time like this. Then, then I will. I'm leaving here tomorrow. Oh, no. No, you're not leaving. We're both staying until... Oh. Until Aunt Elizabeth makes her will. You're staying here whether you like it or not. You hear? Yes, Herbert. But nothing good will come of it. I'm convinced of that. <laughs> no? Well, we'll see about that. Good night, Mother. An hour later, Mary has finally dropped off to sleep. Then, as the clock strikes three, a figure in white slips into Mary's room and stands beside the bed. Slowly, Mary opens her eyes and stifles a scream. Who is it? What do you want? I want to talk to you, Mary. Yes, sir. I have a message for you. A message? Yes. John is here, standing beside me. I, I don't see anyone. He is here. What, what is the message? John says that Elizabeth is planning to leave the estate to you. But he's learned the truth. He knows that his dislike for me was unfounded. He wants the estate left to me, because it's rightfully mine. And he'll never be able to rest in peace until that is accomplished. Oh, I, I don't want it. I don't want any part of it. Then if you want to escape this torment, you must convince your sister that John made a mistake. If you accept any part of it, John will never let you rest. Do you understand? Yes, yes. Yes, I understand. Very well. We we'll leave you now. Good night. <laughs> Elizabeth! Elizabeth! 
Elvis, wake up. Oh, what? Wake up. Oh, Mary, what's wrong? You're shaking like a leaf. He, he was in my room. Who? John, he was in my room. Mary, what are you saying? He had a message. He said you were planning to leave the estate to me, according to his will. But he made a mistake about Bertha. He wants you to leave it to her. So he can rest in peace. Mary, are you out of your mind? No, no, you must believe me. I don't want any part of the estate. Oh, please, promise me. Leave it to Bertha and have done with it. I, I refuse to accept it. Get control of yourself, Mary. I'm leaving here in the morning. I'm frightened. And if you had any sense, you'd leave too. But you stay here. You'll go mad. Very well, Mary. If that's what you call gratitude, you can go. Oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth, but I, I won't remain another night. Are you sure you saw John? No, no. No, but he was there in my room. Did you talk with him? No. No, that is I. Then how do you know he was there? Well, Bertha told me he was there. Bertha? Was she there, too? Oh, yes. She, she told me what he wanted. He said he couldn't reach you. Oh, I should be honest here to everyone but me. Oh, I don't know. But I, I know he was there. I could sense it. Tell you there was someone in the room with Bertha. It must have been John. Oh, let Bertha have the estate or something terrible will happen to all of us. Oh, please, Elizabeth. Go to bed, Mary. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Yes, Elizabeth. Next day, Herbert goes into town and pays a visit to Henry Wentworth, Elizabeth's attorney. Wentworth was also John's attorney for many years and was familiar with the family for two decades. Mr. Wentworth, you drew John Kemper's will. Yes, I did. Have you any idea why he cut his sister Bertha off without a dollar? No, but in the last five years, John turned against Bertha. Turned against her violently. Why? I don't really know. She was his only sister, and he had no brothers. It was very strange. What happened to Bertha's husband? Well, he died about five years ago. Committed suicide. He worked with John at one time, then John set him up in a business of his own. So he went to the wall in the crash at 29 and lost every penny. He couldn't take it, so he killed himself. He left nothing? Mm, nothing but an insurance policy to his wife, Bertha. Didn't amount to much. 5000 I think. Were John and Bertha's husband on good terms? Mm, apparently the best of friends. How did Bertha's husband die? Took poison. Overdose of sleeping tablets. Oh, I see. But from the day Bertha's husband died, John, her brother, seemed to turn against Bertha. And shortly changed his will, cutting Bertha off. I was the only one who knew about it until the will was read. Have you any idea why he changed the will? No. None whatever. It was none of my business. Ah, uh, yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Wentworth. I, I appreciate your telling me this. Good day. Then Herbert pays another visit. A visit to Dr. Martin, formerly John Kemper's physician. Dr. Martin is at first reluctant to talk, but finally answers a few questions. Uh, doctor, uh, you were John Kemper's physician for many years? Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. Was there anything wrong with him? You mean, was he unbalanced? Uh, no, no. Did he have any severe ailments? Well, no. No, the last year or so he seemed to change considerably, though. It became a bit morose. Anything wrong with his heart? Well, yes and no, Yes and no? Well, he, he began to suffer from severe headaches, took to using a lot of aspirin. Of course, too much of anything bad. Uh, he was killed in a car wreck. Yes, he'd been to the city and was driving back home late at night. Drove off into the ditch. Did you attend him? I saw the body shortly after the wreck. He'd been dead about an hour, badly smashed up. Was it his heart? Oh, could have been, but I, I think he went to sleep the wheel. Was there an autopsy? No, it was obvious how he died. His skull had been crushed in. Mm -hmm. Who had he visited in the city on business? I don't know. I never thought about it. Where is John Kemper buried? In the family vault at the edge of his own estate. Didn't you know that? Huh? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I'd forgotten. Uh, well, good day, Doctor. And thanks for the information. Then later that night, the household prepares to settle down to sleep. One by one, the lights go out in the various rooms. Now only that in Elizabeth's room remains. Will there be anything else, ma'am? No. No, he didn't. That'll be all. Has everyone gone to bed? Oh, yes, ma'am. They've all retired. Is the milk warm enough? Yes. Good night, Higgins. Good night, ma'am. I hope you rest well, ma'am. Thank you, Higgins. The moon bathes the estate in its eerie glow. The big clock strikes off the hour. Then, 
In the distance, there is the howl of a dog. A mournful howl of impending doom. John's dog crying in its loneliness. Across the lawn from the family vault walks a haggard figure in the moonlight. A figure with long white hair walking toward the house. And a few moments later, the weird figure appears in Mary's room, stands in the shadows and points at Mary. What, what do you want? Who are you? I am John. John? Oh, good heaven. I've come back to talk to you. You must hear me. I, I hear you. I made a great mistake in life. I hated my sister, but I know all things now. Bertha's a good woman. I'm doomed to walk this place without rest until I've made amends. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, I, I understand. If Elizabeth refuses to listen to my pleas and leaves this estate to you, you will never rest a moment under this roof. For I can never leave. It rightfully belongs to Bertha, and to her it must go. Oh, I, I don't want it. I don't want any part of it. I won't stay here. I promise, just, just let me alone. I will. If you and your son leave here at once. We will. We will. I... Oh, where are you? John? Are you here? John? <gasps> Mary gasps and suddenly falls back on her pillow. Poor Mary has fainted dead away. From the darkened stairway, the great clock chimes out the hour. Three o'clock. Elizabeth. Eyes closed but still awake, senses a presence and slowly opens her eyes. Standing close beside her is the white-haired figure, its face hidden in the shadows. <gasps> no, no, Elizabeth, don't turn on the light. Who? Who is it? You wouldn't want to see me. I've been out there too long. John! <gasps> John! At last I've reached through to you. Oh, I must be dreaming again, no. I... Why? Why are you whispering, John? I'm not whispering, Elizabeth. Can't you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. I... What is that odor? Odor? Yes, a strange odor. Like... Like the smell of flowers. The musty odor of roses. Why? I've just come from the vault, Elizabeth. John! John, what is it? What do you want? going to make your will tomorrow. Yes, yes. Only you can right the wrong I have done. Wrong? My father left this estate to me with the understanding that I should leave it to birth. Yes, I know. I suspected her of wrongdoing and cut her off and instructed you to do so. Yes. But now I know that I was wrong. You must leave the estate to her. You must right my wrongs so that I can go on to my rest. Yes, yes, John. If you fail to do this, I shall be doomed to walk this place throughout eternity. And all those who come here shall not know a moment's peace. Yes, I understand, John. If you fail me, you too shall suffer my torment with me forever. Yes, I... I'll do it. I'll do as you say, only... <laughs> I... John... Your heart, Elizabeth? Yes, I... You haven't much time, Elizabeth. You'll be joining me soon. I know. <laughs> John, where are you? I promise, John. I promise. Elizabeth clutches at her heart, gasping for breath. A few moments pass, and she revives sufficiently to reach for the stimulant on the nightstand. She pours a dose, and as she swallows it, she glances out the window over the moonlit ground. Across the lawn moves the white-haired figure, gliding toward the family vault at the edge of the estate. John! John! <laughs> Elizabeth drops the glass and falls to the floor. A few seconds later, Bertha hurries into the room. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! Mary! Herbert! What happened, Mother? Hurry! Good heavens! Is she all right? Elizabeth! Elizabeth! Oh! Who screamed? Must have been Elizabeth. Had another attack. What? She's still breathing. Put her on the bed. Well, there's a medicine. I'll get another glass. You stay here, Mary. I'll get the glass from the bathroom. What do you suppose happened to her? Maybe. Maybe it was her. Was what? I don't, I don't know. 
wrong with you, Mother? You're white as a sheet. Oh, am I? What are you trying to say? Uh, I saw it, too. So what? What did you well, see? I, I saw him. John. He was in my room a while ago. I, I talked to him. You talked to him? Yes, and he talked to me. I, I heard him and I saw oh, him. What did he say? Stop whimpering and tell us. He said. He said. Oh, mother, Mother, stop it. Stop it. Well, I won't. Come back here. Grab her for you. Elizabeth's coming, too. Oh, Aunt Elizabeth. Aunt Elizabeth. Oh, no, did I? You're, you're all right now. Take it easy. Yes. Yes, I'm all right. What's wrong with Mary? She says she saw John and talked to him. What? I think she's imagining things. No, no. She isn't imagining things. I, I know. I, I saw him, too. He was here. He talked to oh, me. Oh, now, look, Aunt Elizabeth. The whole thing is... No, no, no. He was here. It was no dream. I saw him walk through the garden toward the vault. When? It can't be very long ago. There was a strange, sickly odor in the room all the while he was here. It smelled like musty room. Oh, be quiet, Mother. Now maybe you believe what I've been telling you. What did he say? It was about his will and my will. And he talked about Bertha. About me? Yes. He said he was wrong about you. He wants to make things right through me. He knew I intended to make my will tomorrow. And he told me just what to do. Yes, that's what he said to me. To you? Yes. Why, this is the strangest thing I've ever encountered. Why should he talk to you? Well, he did, I tell you. And Elizabeth must do what he wants. Otherwise, something will happen. What will happen? Well, I, I don't know. I want you to call Mr. Wentworth, the lawyer. And have him here first thing in the morning. I want to draw my will. As John tells me. Yeah, very well. I, I think I'll have a look around the ground. Never go back to sleep now, anyway. So, uh, good night, Aunt Elizabeth. Herbert wanders about the grounds for a while and finally goes to Higgins, the butler, and after some persuasion obtains the keys to the family vault. The next morning, the lawyer, Wentworth, visits Elizabeth in her room. Well, how are you this morning, Elizabeth? Much better, Mr. Wentworth. Hey, you had a bad night. Yes, I guess I had another attack. Oh, so? Uh, Mr. Wentworth, I want to draw up my will. I should have done it long ago, but, well, something held me back. I see. Well, I'll take down the data and have it typed, then bring it back for you to sign. I'll be in court all day, probably through the evening. So I'll have to come around 11 tonight. Very well, as soon as possible. Good. Now, let's have the particulars. Yes. To my sister, Mary Wilton, I leave the five-room cottage in Danbury. Mm-hmm. To my nephew, Herbert Wilton, I leave $1,000 in cash. Yes. And to my husband's sister, Bertha Mallory... I leave all other property, personal and real, amounting to some $400,000. What? Please. Amounting to some $400,000, according to my late husband's wishes. What do you mean? John stipulated that you leave not a penny to Bertha. John has changed his mind. When did he change his mind? Since his death. Don't you think we'd better postpone this until you feel better? I want my will drawn just as I have told you. But what do you mean by saying John has changed his mind? How could he? He told me so. Last night. You know what you're saying. Yes. I saw John. I talked to him. He was wrong in his attitude toward Bertha. Oh, this is... This is ridiculous. I want it done as I say. Very well. I'll draw it up this way. But I certainly think that... You think that... I'm insane? Uh, since you bring it up, yes, I do. So did I, at first. But I'm not. I'll be expecting you around 11 tonight, Mr. Wentworth. Yes. Yes, of course. I, I'll be here. Now it is shortly after 11 the same night. The lawyer has returned to the will, and Elizabeth has called her three relatives to her room. Very well, Mr. Wentworth. This is drawn the way I want it. You mean as John wants it? I mean just that. <laughs> I'm leaving the property that was mine before I married John, the small cottage, to you, Mary, and a thousand dollars to Herbert. All else I am leaving according to John's direction to you, Bertha. That's the way John wants it. And that's the way it shall be. You must do as you think best. I'm doing as John wishes. Hand me the pen, Wentworth. 
There you are. And I hope you all understand. I don't. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well, now that you've got it better, what good is it going to be? What do you mean? How much chance do you think you'll have to use? What happiness do you think it'll bring? More than it would you. Isn't it rightfully mine? Is it? That's the way John wanted oh, it. Oh, no, it isn't. It's the way you want it. I had nothing to do with John it. John made a will. He's never wanted to change. Elizabeth knows better than that. Aunt Elizabeth knows nothing of the kind. This is my house now, and the sooner you leave, the better. You'll be living sooner than I will, you and your spooks. You don't believe in ghosts, and you never saw one. I saw John. Night after night. Everyone saw him. Everyone but me, because I'm not a dunce. Your own mother Mary saw him and talked to him. Gosh, John is dead in his coffin out there in the vault. I saw him. But I did see him. So did I. You wouldn't know if you did see him. We would. We've seen him. Then turn around. Turn around, all of you. And look. John! Good Lord. Is that John? Is it? Yes, yes. Take off your wig. Higgins! Yes, the butler. There's your spook. I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I... You can go, Higgins. I'll explain everything. Bertha hired Higgins to impersonate John. That's a lie. Higgins would never have done it if he'd known about the murders. I trapped him into it. He confessed everything. Murder? What do you mean? I got wise to the whole thing. I investigated the whole story about Bertha's husband and John's accidental death. They were both murdered. You're lying. I have the bodies exhumed and examined. They both died of an overdose of sleeping tablets. The very same purchased by Bertha at a certain drugstore. He's crazy. He's crazy. I can't even listen. She put the tablets in her husband's aspirin bottle. She was the one John visited. That night he had the wreck. He must have drugged him. That's why he went to sleep at the wheel. I didn't. I didn't. He killed her husband for his insurance. And John cut her off on his will because he suspected that she killed her husband. It's a lie. A lie. I tell you. John never wanted his will changed. I have proof of the whole thing. And the police are waiting outside now. You haven't a chance, Bertha. You're guilty. The police. Oh, What could the law of this be? Where is your fortune now? They'll hang you. Yes, I did. I did it. I don't know why, but I did it. I gave him the tablet. Did Higgins know that? No. No, he didn't know. I... Oh. Oh. Bertha, she's fainted. Mother. Oh. No, she hasn't fainted. Oh, what's wrong with her? She's dead. Oh, Mother. <laughs> Mother. Hand me that will, Mr. Wentley. I want to draw up a new one in the morning. Well, there you are. That's the story. John never wanted his will changed, and for good reason. He really knew the truth. But wait a minute. How did you figure this one out, Herbert? You didn't really have those bodies exhumed, did you? I didn't have them exhumed. And if I had... There would have been no traces of sleeping tablets left. And there were no police waiting outside. I was bluffing. Working on pure hypothesis. But it did work. Yes, it worked, Herbert. And it afforded me a very nice story indeed. (laughs) Thank you, Herbert. You're welcome. CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time, I, the Whistler, will return to tell you another weird tale. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.